Jess, can I just say the last six months of my life have felt like the healthiest ever? I mean, maybe I get a little credit in that, but I'm giving most of the credit to Allo Moves because they make it so easy to fit working out into your schedule. It's on demand. It's there when I need it. I'm doing the yoga. I'm doing the Pilates, strengthening. It's gotten me in really good shape. What has been keeping you busy? I'm doing hip openers. I'm doing yoga. I'm doing I all the things. I love a hip opener. Elvis Garcia. He's my guy. Okay. He's got my hips in shape. I'm looking I'm looking up Elvis today. If you're listening to this and you're thinking, I want in, get into Allo Moves. It's a streaming on-demand wellness platform that features yoga, fitness routines, meditation sessions, and so much more. And they've got something for everyone from beginner to advanced, yoga, bar, Pilates, cardio, HIIT. They also have sound baths and breath work too. There's more than just fitness to Allo Moves. You have to check out their gua sha, dry brushing, face yoga, nutrition classes, and so much more. And the best part is you don't need any equipment sometimes or very little little equipment. Oh my God, Jess and I went out the other night and someone was telling us about their home gym and we both started laughing. Like, you don't need a home gym. You just need Allo Moves. <laughs> this fall, make some time for your wellness goals with Allo Moves. For a limited time, Allo Moves is offering our listeners 30 days free plus 20% off your annual membership. But you can only get it by going to allomoves.com and using the code MASCARA20 in all caps. That's A-L-O Moves dot com. The code is MASCARA20 in all caps, and you'll get a free 30-day trial plus 20% off an annual membership. Allomoves.com, code MASCARA20, all caps. Okay, you've heard us talk about hemp here at Fat Mascara. We love their body lotions. Well, guess what? All your favorite scents of hemp's now come in da, 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 scrubs and body washes. They're all plant-based, vegan, and cruelty-free. And yes, there's a fragrance-free option for those of you who want that. But I am loving the scrub right now. I am, first of all, not gloopy doopy. You know how we hate a gloopy <laughs> scrub. Hate it. Hemp's Original Herbal Sugar Scrub. The texture on this is so good. And the scent, oh, take me away. I want to be taken away by hemp's. They have an incredible wash with three-in-one formulas. You know I'm a girl on the go. You can exfoliate with glycolic acid. You're going to clean while it's going to moisturize you at the same time. And it hydrates you with that 100% natural hemp seed oil. Also has shea butter. Jen and I have been like talking about shea butter basically since we were born. And aloe vera. And can I tell you about the scents? Please do. <gasps> Sweet pineapple and honey melon. Triple moisture, which is like a really nice scent original herbal, pomegranate herbal. I mean, these are like popsicle flavors. I love it. It's a tropical delight. Elevate your shower routine with Hemp's new body washes and scrubs. They're available at Ulta Beauty and Hemp's.com. That's Hemp's H-E-M-P-Z with a Z. Make sure to check it out today. Okay, it is time to talk underwear. I am a convert. I've been hearing about this brand forever. It's Skims and it's their Fits Everybody collection. And it is as good as you heard it is. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight. So good in the summer. Molds to your body. Buttery soft fabric, like truly buttery soft. And it stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape. So, you know, as your body changes, it kind of changes with you, meaning you get a perfect fit every time. It's also available in sizes extra, extra small to 4X. Oh, I'm obsessed. Jess, what are you wearing from Skims Fits Everybody Collection? I've been wearing the Fits Everybody Racerback Bra. It's really convenient for the summer with those little racerback tanks. You never know what goes with them. The racerback bra is perfect. Oh, yes, without any of the flabby bits hanging out of the tank top armhole. No, it just sucks me in. It's so good. I have been turned on to the thong. I have So many stylists have recommended this thong to me, like fashion stylists that I'm friends with. And I was like, it can't be that good. It can't be that good. Let me tell you, the Fits Everybody thong is that good. It's so super soft and comfortable. And I know you don't think a thong can be comfortable, but I'm telling you, believe the hype, it can be. Guys, Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com, S-K-I-M-S.com. Plus, you get free shipping on orders over $75. And when you place your order, they're going to ask you, there's a little prompt, how did you hear about Skims? 
please select podcast. And guess what? In the little drop down, you'll see Fat Mascara. Click us because you heard about it from us. And that way we get credit for telling you about it. And you support your favorite beauty podcast, skims.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fat Mascara. I'm Jen Sullivan. Jessica Matlin has left the virtual studio. She'll be back for our interview, don't worry. But I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on our guest today. We are so excited to have Kate Lee here. She's a Los Angeles-based makeup artist and a Chanel celebrity makeup artist. Earlier in her career, though, she worked a lot on editorial shoots for magazines like Dazed and Confused. She did backstage work for Givenchy, McQueen, and she was an assistant to the makeup artist Val Garland. But these days, everybody knows her as like one of the go-to celebrity makeup artists. She works regularly with Rooney Mara, Charlize Theron, Kristen Stewart, Anne Hathaway, Nicola Peltz. I'm sorry, Nicola Peltz Beckham. You know who we're talking about. Anyway, Jess and I were lucky enough to talk to her on one of her rare days off. She's a hard woman to get a hold of, but she's joining us remotely from her home in Pasadena, California. So we're going to talk about her career and her creative process and so much more. All right, then. Let's get into it. Okay. Kate Lee, welcome to Fat Mascara. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. So wait, where are you recording from right now? New York City? No, I am in my office in darkest, deepest Pasadena, California. Well, I did want to let you know that I brought a Chanel lip for you today. Okay. If you're able to guess it, that's a lot of work right now, but it's Experimente, which is like my favorite, favorite. Yes, it's the ink. Yes. It's the ink. It's like this blood red. Anyway, I felt it was appropriate for fashion week and fashion month. And that's one that we repeat as well. So obviously a lot of people like it because sometimes you find that shade that you love disappears. And I get so many messages on Instagram saying, why have they discontinued this color? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question for you, but keep your eyes peeled because there'll be another one along that you'll love just as much. (laughs) She's also customer service, everyone. No, you're so much more than that. Let's talk about it. You have worked your way through many jobs in the beauty industry. Now you're working for Chanel, but let's back up a little bit. I heard you used to get sent home from school for wearing too much makeup. I did. Tell us everything. (laughs) I think that's probably a part of every makeup artist's story that once you connect to the physicality of doing makeup and wearing makeup, you always get a little heavy handed on yourself first and, (laughs) and also your friends if they'll let you. And luckily for me, I had a bunch of friends who were really happy to sit for me. One in particular who benefited on her wedding day a few years ago, but definitely paid the price as I was learning. (laughs) So this is like an old dear friend from school who you're still friends with and did her wedding day makeup? What were you doing for her back in the day? What was the life? I felt like I had to do a wedding to say sorry for everything that I did to her when she was younger. You know, I <laughs> I shaved off her hair. I convinced her she had facial hair and that she needed to let me use cream hair remover all over her face, which she did. Oh I left God. it on too long. <gasps> Why? You just wanted to get some experience with cream hair remover? I just kind of wanted to know how it worked. And she she's this beautiful girl. <laughs> she has like pale blonde Swedish blonde hair and we would dye her hair a different color at lunchtime and send her back to school in the afternoon with like orange hair or like pink hair and we would just buy it from the drugstore and knock it out at lunchtime until one day I did it and I was like this dye is a little bit different there were two bottles in this one and I don't really know why but never mind put them in the thing dyed her hair and then we came to realize that it was permanent and so she had this kind of Mm -hmm. like pinky burgundy hair for a really long time. And her dad was really not happy with me. <laughs> so she paid the price for my experimentation. I shaved off her eyebrows. I drew them on with an eyeliner. I mean, I, I she really paid for it. Poor Rachel. I'm sorry, Rachel. When did you realize that this talent or this uh, enthusiasm was a enthusiasm, talent? Enthusiasm, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was a talent and that's something that, you know, you wanted to take it to the next level and make it a career. I didn't know that it was possible to be a makeup artist as a career. I mean, when I fixed my 
eyes upon it. I was 11 years old and I remember I was 11 because that's the year that you make your options when you're at school in England, which means you have to choose the subjects that you would like to study for the next four or five years. And I was really into music and it was at the time when you had posters of your favorite musicians and bands on your bedroom wall. And I would study these pictures very carefully and they were all flamboyant 80s musical icons like Boy George and Toya Wilcox and Steve Strange, probably all people that no one really has heard of, but they were my icons. Susie Sue from Susie and the Banshees, Adam and the Ants. I loved the whole music scene and I felt, I just remember feeling this very physical urge to apply makeup. I really felt like I could do it. And our neighbors at the time, she worked for Christian Dior and it was the 80s. So it was the height of blue mascara, pink blush, like all of the bright colors. And she would bring me all these horrible old crusty testers from the counter that like hundreds of people had used. And, you know, they were just dried out. And Who awful. cares? Bring it. Yeah. And I was delighted. They were Dior. It was like, doesn't matter. They were Dior and I was excited about it. I didn't really even know what Christian Dior was at that point. I had no idea. And it was Christian Dior then. It wasn't just Dior. So yeah, I kind of like played with it all and, and, and found that I actually had that kind of dexterity. I was always more artistic than academic. And that's where it all began, really. And I'm, and even though I knew I wanted to be a makeup artist per se, I didn't really know what that job was. I didn't know what it would entail. I didn't really understand that I wasn't going to get a job in the same place where I grew up. That's exciting to me. And I feel like I want to do it. But then I understand that you didn't necessarily just jump to becoming a makeup artist, that you were also an esthetician, right? That was also part of your training. So I think the careers advisors in the north of England where I grew up were realists. I don't know if you ever watched Billy Elliot, the movie, but there's this one point where he's speaking to his family and he wa- he's like, I want to be a dancer. And they're like, get yourself a trade, Billy. You need a trade. You know, you need yeah. something <laughs> to fall back on because these crazy ideas that you have just might not work out. And so I, my expectations were sort of being managed a little bit by the careers advisor. And she tried to talk me into being an esthetician, uh, not an esthetician, uh, an optician. Why she thought those two things were the same, I've got no idea. Wait, like try eyeglasses on people? Yeah, she was like, why don't you consider being an optician? Because you have to look at people's faces and understand what's good for them. And I was like, no, I'm going to be a makeup artist. And Did she hear you right? Did she like understand what you were saying? Yeah, she just was like thinking small, you know. She was like, we don't need any makeup artists in Yorkshire. Apart from if you're going to do a newsreader's makeup. We don't need people to do makeup in Yorkshire. So you should be a hairdresser or you should be an optician. And basically we worked our way around until we decided that being an esthetician might be a good midway point because it would set me up with a bit of knowledge before I trained to become a makeup artist, which there was only one course that existed in those days for makeup. And that was in London. And I knew that I would have to get a certain level of qualification before I be accepted to that course. So I was like beyond my college before I even got there. I was thinking about what was coming next. I don't know where I got this drive from. Well, because you knew what you wanted to do. Certainly not the career advisor. <laughs> yeah, no. I think it's, it's that classic small thinking. Were there people around you? Were your friends into it? It's, you're not the only one with this kind of story. Yeah, I think my friends just thought I was a little bit mad. And I was an only child, so I wasn't I didn't have older siblings to aspire to. And I was always more interested in the exotic, slightly more dangerous people. And yeah, I think they were just trying to talk me out of that idea because they realized that actually at that point, it was kind of an unrealistic dream to have. But, you know, I always think that no matter how unrealistic you might think it is, if a kid shows an interest in something, got to let them have it. Yeah. You know, I was an 11 year old kid. If I'd listened to her, I wouldn't have done half the things I've done in my life. But I mean, I don't blame her, but it was just I a think small town. Some people just can't see things for themselves. It was a small town with small minds. Exactly. So, how did you find your style as a makeup artist? Like, how would you describe your sort of aesthetic and your process? 
there's a little gap in the middle of there that you skipped. <laughs> Just because I feel like the esthetician part was actually really important. And even though I never really wanted to do it, and I hated my entire time at college. I had one really good friend who just kind of pushed me and pushed me to get through it. I'm glad that I did it because a part of my aesthetic now comes from what I learned then. And I just have a, a thorough understanding of the skin. And I know what I'm looking at. And I know how to treat a problem. I know when to not touch something. I know... Nowadays, I know who to refer that person to. There were a lot of things that I learned in college to being an esthetician that have served me very well further on in my life. So if I had to say there was one thing that unified all the different stages I've gone through makeup-wise, I mean, my career is quite long now. So the things I was into when I was a lot younger, I'm really not into now. And that's, that's a progression but I would say everything always comes from skin because without that, you're limited as to what you can create. So I, I think your time is very well spent taking care of the skin that you're in and what we're just given naturally. What kind of work do you find yourself enjoying most? Because you do all kinds of work. You do celebrities for a press day. You do editorial work. What really speaks to you the most? I love my crews. I love the groups of people that I get to be in. Um, and I love the energy So exchange. collaborating. I like the collaboration. I have so many people in the industry that I just love and I truly look forward to seeing who are not in my life at other times. So I only ever see them at work. But I think the connections that you make with people and the encouragement you give one another to feel secure in being creative and maybe taking a risk or trying something new. Those are the things that really feed me now. I think if you'd asked me 10 years ago, maybe it would be different, but now I just, I just really enjoy the energy. I enjoy the energy and the connection of being around other humans who are trying to create an image or are going to an event and the process that you go through when you're trying to you know, feel your best to walk on a red carpet. It, there's a lot, there's a lot to that. Can you give us a recent example that felt really good? Or one where you felt there was a lot of trust or like you took a risk and it, it just felt great? I think the one that, that comes to mind immediately is Kira Knightley's been my client for over 20 years. And I saw her just recently and we did a bunch of press in New York the old band was back together. It was me and Ben Skirvin who does her hair and Leith Clark, who is her stylist. And we were all together. I think we did four days and we did many, many different looks. And we were like running from one thing to another. And that felt really good. It felt fantastic because we all know each other so well. And Kira's very trusting. You know, she doesn't really, she never really gets involved or questions what I'm doing. She just sits down and lets it happen. And that is just the greatest compliment when you're a makeup artist, because to be trusted on that level, you don't let anybody into this zone, right? It's quite, it's a force field. You don't let anybody in here unless they're intimately connected to you. So that feels like a big compliment. Yeah. We had a great time. It was so lovely to see. Force it. field. I like that. She's pointing to her face, by the way. <laughs> the face zone. Yeah. When you have a day like that or four days, do you change up your creative process based on where your client is going to be? Someone who's on TV versus a do and go versus a red carpet versus a poster for a movie? Absolutely. Or is the, is the goal always the same? Just make that girl look pretty. No, it changes a lot because... You know, for example, I was in New York last week and my client was going to be face to face with a lot of people speaking to them, but she was also going to be photographed. So then you have to think about when someone's being photographed on a step and repeat, you hope that the lighting is going to be good, but you don't know that. And then you don't want to put too much makeup on thinking about it photographically if someone has to stand two feet away from that person. Like you, you don't want them to be looking at the makeup. You want them to be looking at the person. And so it very much depends on the, the event. So like, for example, the last time I was in Toronto, there was a red carpet event, but that red carpet event was actually very small. 
It was tiny. And the step and repeat is in a very small area in the lobby of the hotel. So you don't want to be approaching that like it's the Academy Awards because it could so easily be too much and have people perceive your client as trying too hard or, you know, because people have always got something to say about the way you look when you're in that situation. So you have to trust the people around you to help you make the right decisions based on what's appropriate for that event. So that's always at top of mind for me. I have never thought about this because obviously when we do a set shoot, you can test the lighting and everything, but those red carpet setups, like are the cameras eight feet away or 18 feet away, overhead light or front facing light? Do you get a peek at any of that or you're just like, let's hope it works? No, not at all. And and usually it's the highest profile events that let you down. Decisions that are made higher up, God knows who makes the decisions in how that area looks, but... yeah. For example, a green or a blue red carpet. Why would you do that to anybody? No one looks good with a green or a blue reflection. What does it do? Well, it kicks back blue highlights onto the face or green and people can just look slightly sallow. Sometimes they're lit too brightly. Sometimes they're not lit enough. What's a good carpet color? Like is red actually nice? Like, or, And if not red, what's like a really nice flattering color? Red, red's the best, I think, just because that's the classic. And I feel like there's something about the cooler tones that is just very draining to a lot of people. I think you're right. It's like sallow. You look sallow. Yeah, it just pulls the color from your face. If you think about blue and green, it's the same color as your veins. It's the same color as any darkness under the eye. It pulls out all the unflattering tones in the skin and so it's just a really poor choice and you know like the academy awards get it right they do a fantastic job but the best is cam is that the best red carpet venice is a little bit more you don't know what you're going to get but can because of the nature of the way the carpet is set up and you're being photographed from both sides it's so evenly lit it's beautiful there's ambient light it's like it's Mm. incredible but they're not all like that (laughs) They always do look good at Cannes. And I was like, oh, it's just that French, you know, something's in the air over there. Well, they take it seriously because it's really important, you know? Clearly. You mentioned Karen Knightley. I'm not speaking to her directly, but you've worked with her for so many years. I'm curious about how you approach a long relationship with someone. Obviously, relationships are important to you. But when you first start working with someone, are you like a fashion stylist? Like, okay, what's your look going to be? Are you the edgy girl, the classic girl, the modern girl, and we're going to stick with that for the next 10 years? Or do you approach each job with that person differently? I mean, with my long-term clients, we were starting out at the same time. Like, I've worked with Kate Winslet since she was a wee child. And I learned so much from her because she had already made a bunch of movies and worked with some incredible people before I got my hands on her. And then we just happened to get along and she taught me what she knew. And so I think it depends on the person because sometimes people want to be involved in how they look and say, well, if we could do this this way, I would prefer it because I I find I look like this if we don't approach something in a certain way. And other people just sit down and say, do your thing. But I think the longer your relationship goes, plus the natural aging process, we're both aging. And so we go through different stages where choices I would have made when I was in my 20s, I probably wouldn't make now. And I guess trends and it depends what the person's wearing. It depends on the event that they're going to. There's just so many different things at play that you can't have a uniformed approach to anything. And giving someone a character, I've never done that. I, that's just not the way I work. It, it just has never been presented to me that way. But we, we have to be open to everybody who's at the table and take comments. Jess, can I just say the last six months of my life have felt like the healthiest ever? I mean, maybe I get a little credit in that, but I'm giving most of the credit to Allo Moves because they make it so easy to fit working out into your schedule. It's on demand. It's there when I need it. I'm doing the yoga. I'm doing the Pilates, strengthening. It's gotten me in really good shape. What has been keeping you busy? I'm doing hip openers. I'm doing yoga. I'm doing I all the things. I love a hip opener. Elvis Garcia. He's my guy. Okay. He's got my hips in shape. I'm, look, I'm looking up Elvis today. 
If you're listening to this and you're thinking, I want in, get into Alamoose. It's a streaming on-demand wellness platform that features yoga, fitness routines, meditation sessions, and so much more. And they've got something for everyone from beginner to advanced, yoga, bar, Pilates, cardio, hit. They also have sound baths and breath work too. There's more than just fitness to Alamoose. You have to check out their gua sha, dry brushing, face yoga, nutrition classes, and so much more. And the best part is you don't need any equipment sometimes or very little little equipment. Oh my God, Jess and I went out the other night and someone was telling us about their home gym and we both started laughing like, you don't need a home gym. You just need Allo Moves. <laughs> this fall, make some time for your wellness goals with Allo Moves. For a limited time, Allo Moves is offering our listeners 30 days free plus 20% off your annual membership. But you can only get it by going to allomoves.com and using the code MASCARA20 in all caps. That's A-L-O Moves. Dot com. The code is MASCARA20 in all caps, and you'll get a free 30-day trial plus 20% off an annual membership. Allomoves.com, code MASCARA20, all caps. Hey, everyone. If you've ever had unprotected sex, forgot your birth control, had a condom break, or you're just not sure, we're excited to talk to you about a new company that is giving emergency contraception a much needed rebrand. Julie is an FDA approved morning after pill that helps to stop a pregnancy before it starts. Julie is aiming to be the emergency contraception company for the next generation. And it's one of learning and acceptance. Can I tell you the frequently asked questions section of their website is genius. All the questions you have, about emergency contraception are answered there, and it's not judgy. When it comes to complex and stressful choices around your health, they believe women deserve products that are easy in every way, easy to find, easy to take, easy to relate to, easy to understand. Julie stops your body from releasing an egg using the same active ingredient as Plan B or other morning after pills. Essentially, Julie works by preventing or delaying your ovulation. With no egg, there's no fertilization and therefore no pregnancy, and it's no risk to future fertility. Julie does work best when you take it right away or within 72 hours of unprotected sex. You can find it at CVS, Target, Walmart, but they also have a website so you can order it now and have it on hand for when you need it. It's legal in all 50 states. You don't need an ID, a prescription, or a credit card to get it. Julie has a morning after pill that's working to increase access to emergency contraception for women across the country. Julie has a one-for-one -one donation program, and every time you purchase Julie at a store or online, the company donates one pill to someone who needs it. Julie also partners with over 20 organizations across the country to provide donations to those disproportionately impacted by health inequities. Right now, Julie is offering our listeners $10 off your online purchase. Go to juliecare.co slash mascara to get $10 off your online purchase for a limited time. That's juliecare.co slash mascara. Or if you need Julie right away, you can find it at your nearest CVS, Target, or Walmart today. Okay, it is time to talk underwear. I am a convert. I've been hearing about this brand forever. It's Skims and it's their Fits Everybody collection. And it is as good as you heard it is. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight, so good in the summer, molds to your body, buttery soft fabric, like truly buttery soft. And it stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape. So, you know, as your body changes, it kind of changes with you, meaning you get a perfect fit every time. It's also available in sizes extra, extra small to 4X. Oh, I'm obsessed. Jess, what are you wearing from Skims Fits Everybody collection? I've been wearing the Fits Everybody Racerback bra. It's really convenient for the summer with those little racerback tanks. You never know what goes with them. The racerback bra is perfect. Oh, yes, without any of the flabby bits hanging out of the tank top armhole. No, it just sucks me in. It's so good. I have been turned on to the thong. I have So many stylists have recommended this thong to me, like fashion stylists that I'm friends with. And I was like, it can't be that good. It can't be that good. Let me tell you, the Fits Everybody thong is that good. It's so super soft and comfortable. And I know you don't think a thong can be comfortable, but I'm telling you, believe the hype, it can be. Guys, Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com, S-K-I-M-S.com. Plus, you get free shipping on orders over $75. And when you place your order, they're going to ask you, there's a little prompt, how did you hear about Skims? Please select podcast. And guess what? In the little drop down, you'll see Fat Mascara. Click us because you heard about it from us. And that way we get credit for telling you about it. And you support your favorite beauty podcast, skims.com.
I ask because I was going to say real women, but I was like, of course, actresses are real women, but women that aren't in front of the spotlight every day. I think a lot of us learn how to do makeup at a certain point in our life. And then we just sort of like keep that going all through the decades. You know what I mean? Like, how should we be evolving it? You've done that with like Kate, for example. What has evolved? What should we learn from that? Yes, there is a tendency for people to, first of all, feel obliged to wear makeup and then adopt a technique or a certain way of doing their makeup. And then they know it works, so they stick to it and they do it for the rest of their lives. And sometimes along with that can come a belief that they can't wear a cream blush or they can't use a brow gel or, you know, like I can't do that because it doesn't work for me. And actually you'll find out that the last time they tried a cream blush was like 1991. And you're like, we have come a long way. Oh, it was like Tangy. Remember? remember yeah. Tangy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I think that's the first time on the show we've actually used that, dropped that name, but sure, yeah. Well, I was trying to think of like a cream blush back in the day and like they were horrible. Well, they were greasy and like they wouldn't stay put. And so then we'd be in this situation where you're like baby steps, but you're sort of like, how long is it since you actually tried a cream blush? Like give it a chance, like go try something. How often would you recommend, like just like if you're talking to your friend, how often would you recommend somebody... Think about updating their look. I don't think it's so much about updating your look. I think it's about swapping out your products and finding different ways to use them or using a different, let's just say you've always used a, eyebrows are a good example. Because when I first started doing makeup and I was at college in the 90s, we had those super skinny eyebrows and they would be tiny and we would put them on with a pencil. And that was pretty much it. And then we moved into the big jumbo eyebrows and then it was powder to draw the eyebrow in. And now we're at this point where we're using those little felt tipped ones where you can draw each individual eyebrow and we're using tinted brow gels so we can see every single hair. Now, if you weren't interested in beauty, you might not know that your blocky friends era eyebrows are just not cool anymore because you've just bought the same eyebrow product for the last Mm -hmm. 20 years because it worked the first time and you stick with it. But I think it's more about, you have to go out and check out products because they're designed to use in a different way now and the formulations are better. And like, for example, I wear no makeup most days. I spend more time taking care of my skin than I do applying makeup. But I used to wear a lot of makeup. And then I wore less and less because I think when you're an esthetician, it kind of beats it into you that I don't want to show up at work and someone say, well, I don't know what I want, but I don't want to look like you. I don't want what you have. (laughs) You know, I have to be like a blank canvas, right? I would rather someone say, oh, you've got really pretty skin than, oh, I like that blush kind of thing. Right. You don't want to make too much of a statement. Totally. I just feel like it's, it really comes down to the individual and you, you, have to be curious about it and ask younger generations. Like my friend's daughter is my source of all new products. When I go to London, she'd be like, you've got to get this one. It's the crazy about this on TikTok. It's the most amazing thing, blah, 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 blah. She knows all about it. She knows the backstory. She knows everything. All the things that I might not spend time reading about. So enlist the help of a, a younger person to help you. How often is she correct? Now you're the pro. No, often. you're the pro. How often is she right about things? Very often. Really? Yeah. What, what has she found that's good? Like, give us, yeah, like, I'm tapping into her right now. What, what has she found that's really good? Her name is Misty. She is my best friend's daughter. She's a model, so she gets to try a lot of different things. But the last time I was in London, she said, you need to get this eyebrow gel. It's amazing. And I said, okay. I said, what, you know, what's amazing about it? She said, I can't explain it. We just have to get you some. And so I bought everything she told me to buy. And I said, well, how did you know about this brow gel? And she said, well, it went viral on TikTok because this girl had an accident. I don't, she hurt herself. I don't, I don't know exactly what the accident was. Um, and she was posting pictures of herself from her hospital bed. And everyone's like, we're so sorry you hurt yourself, but your eyebrows are on point. <laughs> 
<laughs> I remember that. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah. It has lun- it has staying power. So you like the product? It's bomb-proof. I mean, I can see why that happened. But I never would have known about that product had she not told me. But the truth is, I never would have picked it up. I never would have gone to Selfridges and picked up that product and gone, oh, I wonder about this. You know, I just would have been like, eh. But it was brilliant. Keep her close. I am. <laughs> I realize the skincare is part of the reason you're doing less makeup. But like, if you were doing Susie Sue on the lunch break and shaving off Rachel's eyebrows, mm. do you ever have that urge to just go experiment on yourself anymore? Like, where did, myself, where's never. that part of painting a face go? The last time I painted my own face, it was when I was designing a Marvel character for Charlize. And she's great. She's like, just come up with something. And I was like, well, I feel like I need to show you a few different things just in case you don't like what I do. And so I had to do it on myself to get a feeling, which is really hard when you look at her face and then you look at mine, it's a little bit of a disappointment. But I had to do it because I had to get an idea of what it would look like from many different angles because that's the nature of film. It's not it's not a static shot where everything gets fixed in post, you know? It's, a, it's an action role. And mm-hmm. it's also with a character like that, it's something that's hopefully going to be around for a really long time. And so you want to create something that's artful, but also that's easy to emulate so that kids can go, oh... I'm going to do that makeup for Halloween. Or I want to look like Charlize in the Marvel pictures. That kind of goes through your head at the same time. But that was the last time I painted my own face. And I, I sent it to her and, and she was like, wow. <laughs> I texted her a picture of myself. She was like, okay. Did, it, did that look end up in a movie? Yeah, it was in the last Captain America. As with all Marvel movies, it was a character that had existed before in the original comics and they brought her back. Oh, God, I'm terrible. I can't remember her name. Okay, so this was not like... It's on my Instagram. A You'll super, see it. I think I remember the character. She only shows up for five minutes at the end of the movie with Benedict coming. I remember, and she looked beautiful. She did not look like Miss Bugface or Miss Lizard or whatever Marvel character. It was like gorgeous. I'm looking at it now. I mean, she looks yes. great. She's pretty. It's just, it's, yeah, she's... It's still very pretty. And her costume was purple and got to talk to the costume guys and that was so fun. And that was an amazing opportunity and it was an incredible thing. But that was the last time I turned the makeup wand on myself. You don't do a lot of film, do you? You're mostly more editorial and celebrity, right? I have worked on movies intermittently over the years, very intermittently. If I take a project on a movie, it, it generally depends on the length of the movie because I don't want to remove myself from rotation and my other clients. So I tend to not do them very often. Plus you have to be in a union to do movies. And so it depends on whether you're able to do that. And it's a very different lifestyle. And it's a hell of a commitment because you can sign on for three months and then it ends up being so much longer than that. And that's why I've turned down quite a few things in my career that could have taken me out of town for six to nine months. And I think maybe if they'd come to me when I was younger, I might have considered it. But at this point, I would have to think very carefully about it. You're not as much doing movies. You're more doing the other kind of work. You did mention that you have a bunch of people in rotation. And I'm curious how you balance that with what you do for Chanel. Or is it just that I use Chanel on the people in rotation? Like, how how are those two parts of your career working together? I mean, obviously not everybody I work with, I can use Chanel with, like Charlize is a Dior ambassador. So there are plenty of relationships that you have to navigate. And luckily for me, Chanel are super, super understanding and supportive of me in those situations. And because the Chanel artist program was the first one, we've learned on the job over the years how to make all of those scenarios work. And the rest of it is just timing. It could be that two of your clients are promoting a movie at the same time and then you you don't get to see one of them. And really in that situation, you just work with the person who booked you first. I mean, it's really that simple. That's how we should do it anyway. (laughs) Well, that sounds like the best of both worlds. It sounds kind of freeing and you also get the, uh, the relationship of Chanel. It really is. It's such a gift because as a freelancer, you quite often just don't have 
that kind of security. So it's a, it's a godsend. Thank you, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about, let's talk a little bit about product. What products do you return to again and again for yourself, but also professionally and personally? In the Chanel world, there is a range of skincare that I pretty much live and die by. It's the Hydra Beauty range. That's been around. Oh, it's so I, good. Yeah, since I first started with Chanel, there was a serum that I just always loved so much. I think we still have it, but over the years, the formulation has changed, but the, the concept of that skincare has remained the same. And I find that it pretty much works for everybody and it's something that I love personally. So that's something that I constantly replenish. Moving on from skincare, what about color-wise? I think I'm very fortunate in the sense that I've always got a new bunch of makeup to get into and there's always new colors and different formulations coming out within the brand. I'm also fortunate in the sense that I get sent a lot of new products from other companies. Um, my good friend Monica Blunder just started her own makeup company a few years ago and she just sent me some really beautiful lip liners actually. And it makes me happy to see my friends being creative and creating their own products and also hair products. My friend Mara Rosak just did a, a few hair products called Rose, um, which are beautiful. And I'm just happy to see my colleagues flourishing and support them where I can. Yeah. I want to know about your brows because are you telling me that's your natural brow color right there? It is. I'm surprised you can even see them because I feel <sighs> like I'm, I'm equal parts blonde and equal parts gray. Oh, really? They seem to be nicely defined. Yeah, very good. Wow. Well, no, I have no makeup on. We, we learned from the best. Do you pluck your own brows? Do you get them groomed? I mean, that's part of the job, right? I wish I had brows to pluck. The 90s pretty much put a nail in that for me because I had very skin pencil eyebrows, like tiny, tiny. And this is a, my mom. I remember my mom saying to me, you need to grow your eyebrows back now because if you don't, you will never have any eyebrows. And and she, you know, obviously in the 60s, she had a very skinny eyebrows and I actually listened to her for once and this is about as much eyebrow as I can get. Plus I'm so, I'm so blonde and I'm so gray. Wait, what age did she say this to you? How old were you? 19. 19? Oh God, that's young. Okay, hear that everyone? If you're at 19 and you have skinny brows, start growing. Well, yeah. And, you know, it's funny because I, I think that beauty trends kind of are like fashion trends. They go in like a 30 year loop. So I'm just kind of like catching the beginning of where I started again now. And one of my good friends and clients, Nicola Peltz, pulled her eyebrows very skinny and she, she was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm like, Nicola, please don't do it. Don't do it. Like we can make them look skinny. Let's just make them look skinnier. Please let's not pull them out. Your eyebrows are perfect. And she's like, no, I want to do it. If you don't do it, I'm going to do it. I was like, oh, okay. So I, I pulled her eyebrows thinner for her. I, they're still not as thin as mine used to be, but they're pretty skinny. And I'm just like, Good girl, you better grow them back soon because you're going to be stuck with skinny eyebrows if you don't. <laughs> and you plucked them. You did all the plucking for her. I did. <laughs> Got to give the people what they want. <laughs> Are there any products that you're constantly refilling in your kit? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is mascara because it doesn't last very long. Also, for me, when I'm using a mascara, I'm not using the actual wand. I'm using an extra wand in the mascara. So they dry out a lot faster than... I carry like six or seven different kinds of mascara depending on what I'm doing. And if I'm with someone for a long time, I'll give them their mascara. So they just have their own personal mascara. But if there's even a month in between me seeing them, I, I pretty much bin it and get another one because it doesn't last long and it's close to your eyes and it dries out and that affects its performance. And so mascaras are constantly in and out of the kit. A lot of disposables. Which one do you use for yourself? At the moment, I have Cogendo mascara that I love because it's a very, very dark navy blue. And when you don't really wear much makeup, it's kind of fun because it brings attention to your eyes, but people don't really know why they're looking at them. And it's, it's blue and it's subtle enough that you don't notice it per se, but it's still a, it's still very attractive. And if you pair that 
dark, dark indigo blue mascara with a lip, it's kind of amazing. You don't really need to do much more or just a blush and a colored mascara. So super minimal, but that's what I'm using at the moment. I like that as a minimal tip. Yeah, looking for less is more right now. <laughs> I like how you pulled it full circle. We started with your electric blue in, in Yorkshire is where you grew up. Yeah. Now we're doing the slightly more mature version. We've gone navy. We've upgraded the formula. I like that for you. I'm Princess Diana. You know, she she kind of came on the scene around the same time that I was really interested in makeup. So I think I've always had a little bit of an attraction to a blue mascara. I'm not quite ready to go exactly back there, but I can do a nod to it. <laughs> And b- before we wrap up here, we have a little speed for you. Like, what about, do you do fragrance? Like, what, f- candles? What What does Kately smell like? <sighs> Depends what day you get me on. <laughs> oh, good. That means you're into it. Tell us what today is. I'm super into fragrance in any capacity. I love incense. I love candles. I love perfume for the skin. I love perfume for the hair. I tend to use from the Chanel collection, the Essential I use the Eau de Cologne, which is just like a super light, lemony, fresh scent. And it's in a huge bottle. And so you can be lavish with it. It's kind of amazing. I sometimes also use the jasmine oil and I just put it in my hair, which is a nice way to wear fragrance sometimes if you don't want to just kind of like, if you want it to be sublime, it's quite nice if it's in your hair. I think they did just do some hair fragrance. I know they did Chance as a hair fragrance just recently. But in my house, I love Diptyque, obviously. It's old school, but great. I love True Dawn, T-R-U-D-O-N. But you can't just say Diptyque and not tell us which one, Kate. Which Diptyque? Well, Baze. I love, no, I don't like Baze. It's too acidic somehow. I like the smoky one, the Bois du Bois or whatever it's called. Bois de Feu, Feu de Bois, yeah. Feu de Bois, I love that. And then Trudon is amazing. They're number two, their scent, they do it as a candle, as one of those pomanders with the, with the sticks. And they also do fragrance for the body as well. And then there's a company in London called Perfuma H, who I became aware of a couple of years ago. So I would always sort of cart these big, heavy candles. I put them in my hand luggage and kind of cart them through from, from London. But they actually sell them here now, which is great. Um, and they're popping up all over the, the world right now. I love Bouli, Officine Bouli. They have stores in New York, Paris, Tokyo, all over the place. I know you're talking about. Big, marble, heavy That little candles. shop in Paris is like, oh. Yeah, I love the calligraphy. I love all of it. I am very into home fragrance. I love it. We love a fellow candle head, Kate. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Lightning round, Kate. I need to know the first beauty product you ever fell in love with. It was a Chanel foundation. I saved all my pennies to buy it. I can't remember what it was called. It was in a glass bottle with that magic little black lid. It was the most decadent, beautiful thing I ever bought. It was light as a feather, slightly powdery. Way too light for my skin. The wrong color entirely. And did you wear it? Yes. Yeah, I did. Wrong, wrong color. Who cares? Slap Who cares? it on. It's I Chanel. It. Okay. Put it on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Favorite movie? I'm the person that everybody says, oh, do you remember this film? And I go, no. And they're like, you haven't seen. And I'm like, I don't know what I was doing while you guys were all laid on your parents' couch watching movies, but I definitely was not there. Um, I recently just watched Beetlejuice again, and I do have a soft spot for Beetlejuice just because I feel like just visually it was such a feast, and Winona is so amazing. Okay, that, that tracks. Okay. Gina Davis. How cute is she? Yeah, in that? she played like, the mom. The, no, she She's didn't good. play the mom. She played the couple whose house they were haunted. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it was all flowery dresses. I loved it. It's very. It's, it feels like it matches like the vibes that you would like at that time. I like pale skin and black hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most recent purchase. Be honest. It doesn't have to be a beauty product. Maybe you got a new mop. I just got back from Tokyo. 
And there's a store there that I just love called Arts and Science. And they do the most beautifully made, absolutely minimalistic, incredible clothing in the way that I feel like only Japan can do. And I bought myself a really beautiful black linen shirt. And I think I'll have it till the day I die. I'm very happy with it. That's the most fabulous answer we've ever gotten to that question. Well done. (laughs) All right. Next up, astrological sign. Oh, I am a Virgo and I am a real Virgo. My rising sign is Aquarius. So I think that kind of keeps me a little more balanced, but Virgo. So happy birthday to you, I imagine. Next week. Nice. Virgo solidarity. Jess's as well. See you. (laughs) When when is it your birthday? 17th. Yes, girl. I'm the 19th. We take a lot of shit, but we know it's all. Everybody secretly loves us. That's why. You need a Virgo in your life. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Just to organize your closet. <laughs> See, I'm actually not that organized. There's a method to my madness. I'm not, I know what you're saying, but it's, I think it's a particularity. I'm particular. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'm not like all the spices in a row. I'm just... just you just need to know where the spices are from. Oh, <laughs> Well, yes, yes. I don't care well if they're said. matching pots, but I need to know that you got this one in the Bon Marche in Paris. <laughs> but that cinnamon must be Saigon cinnamon. Yes. <laughs> it's exacting. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then last but not least, it's 12 noon on a Saturday. What, Kate Lee, are you doing? I'm probably listening to a podcast because it's my obsession. I'm listening to podcasts or I'm listening to an audio book and I'm doing several other things at the same time. Maybe walking the dog, maybe doing shopping, maybe sorting out my vast amounts of makeup and reorganizing my kit, obsessively washing and caring for my brushes, something along those lines. I'm doing something methodical while I'm listening to something else. She's a Virgo. Okay. See you later, Kate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product review or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at fatmascara. If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening. Okay, you've heard us talk about hemp's here at Fat Mascara. We love their body lotions. Well, guess what? All your favorite scents of hemp's now come in scrubs and body washes. They're all plant-based, vegan, and cruelty-free. And yes, there's a fragrance-free option for those of you who want that. But I am loving the scrub right now. I am, first of all, not gloopy doopy. You know how we hate a gloopy (laughs) scrub. Hate it. Hemp's Original Herbal Sugar Scrub. The texture on this is so good. And the scent, oh, take me away. I want to be taken away by hemp's. They have an incredible wash with three-in-one formulas. You know I'm a girl on the go. You can exfoliate with glycolic acid. You're going to clean while it's going to moisturize you at the same time. And it hydrates you with that 100% natural hemp seed oil. Also has shea butter. Jen and I have been like talking about shea butter basically since we were born. And aloe vera. And can I tell you about the scents? Please do. (gasps) Sweet pineapple and honey melon. Triple moisture, which is like a really nice scent original herbal, pomegranate herbal. I mean, these are like popsicle flavors. I love it. It's a tropical delight. Elevate your shower routine with Hemp's new body washes and scrubs. They're available at Ulta Beauty and Hemp's.com. That's Hemp's H-E-M-P-Z with a Z. Make sure to check it out today.